Hi, baby. Come come over here. What's wrong? You come over here. Hey, I'm just filming something. What do you mean? Yeah, see? Come over here. It's okay. Come on. Can you clap to sync the audio? Clap to sync the audio. Go. Okay, the audio synced. Good job. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. There you go. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, I now have fur all over my face, but it's okay. It's fine. So hi guys, welcome to another video. This video is going to be pretty simple. Just a little quick update just to throw out there. I realize I tend to do videos that are a little long, like 30 minutes, 20 minutes, and that I don't need to always do that. I could just do a fun little short video in between the longer ones and uh, that would probably be better for everyone. <laughs> Pretty sure no one is trying to watch 30 minutes of me rambling every single time I upload videos anyway. So <laughs> today's gonna be a little shorter one. I've just been basically trying to make do as well as I can with the cages that I have in the space that I have while I live here. I'm at a place now where I feel comfortable to start looking at places to live and to move out, but uh, rent and or buying in general houses is a little crazy right now. Uh, the housing market is not what it was back in 2017. So <laughs> until I find a place that will be cool with me and my animals, because if I don't specifically put them in the contract, like we've done other times where like the renters tell me like, oh, it's fine. We'll just do it under the table. I'm not doing that again because if one of you little great people because if one of you little silly people again decide to call and pretend to be my neighbors and tell the HOA that I am dangling my snakes off balconies and walking my monitor on a leash and scaring dogs if that's not clear I, I wasn't doing that and then the HOA tell me it's too much to deal with and that they want to move me out I'm just not doing that again I, I refuse I refuse I'm the next place I live I'm staying until I decide to leave me so anyway until then I've been trying to make do with the cages that I have here it's a little it's it's been difficult but basically I have some bigger cages that when I first set up all my animal cages I didn't use so now that my animals have grown more in the past few years I've moved some of them into the bigger cages and then the smaller ones into the cages that the bigger ones were in before. So with that being said, Tofu needed a new cage. He's finally, he finally started to grow at least enough to get him into a bigger cage. He's been the slowest growing snake ever. He is hitting his growth spurt now, so I think it's finally time that he's going to actually look his age pretty soon here. But Tofu was needing a bigger cage, so I had put Salem in a bigger cage, but since then he had already doubled in size. So I decided Tofu would go in Salem's cage and Salem would go in my corn snake's old cage. We just basically ever moved everyone around. I did at least want to film a video showing the upgrade of Tofu's cage and the upgrade of Salem's cage. It's not going to be anything amazing. If anything, it's upgrading cages with stuff I already owned and things that I could find around my garage. I am doing as much as I can to save money right now. I had a vet bill that was just insane from one of my cats and I'm trying to pay that off right now. So until I do that, I'm saving money right now, okay? When Nemo was a baby, he had some bladder issues and they said it might be an issue that is reoccurring throughout his life. They didn't know for sure. Thought I got that all handled as a baby, but then last year he decided, or was it this year? This year, this year, he decided that no, he was gonna get another little issue in his bladder. And now I have like a $5,000 vet bill, so. So we're saving money today. And so this whole upgrade was just stuff that I did with things I already owned. I just kind of wanted to show it as a little fun video, something to throw out there. We're gonna do that now, okay? <laughs> All right, so the first thing I did was just empty out the enclosure. And after that, I just found some spare reptile enrichment that I had laying around the house. And I just started trying to get a layout of how I wanted it to look, because I am building the little back wall for these guys. So next thing I do is I fill up all the back wall, the space around all of the wood and stuff, and I just fill it up with the gaps and cracks. And I have to wait 24 hours after this for it to dry. And the next day, once it's dry, before I start painting, I first kind of just cut down the foam in the areas where it's really round and just kind of fluffy looking to make it look more like either, you know, a rock wall or like the bark on a tree. I just try to make the round parts a little more rigid instead of fluffy and round. Once I'm done with that, then I move on to doing the silicone painting. I get a brown color and I just fill the entire background so it's brown. Then once I'm done painting, I add the substrate on top of it while it's still wet. Once it's dry, when I tilt the tank back up like this, 
it'll be actually stuck to the back wall. Didn't have exactly enough forest floor, so I used a little bit of aspen this time, but next time it's just gonna be all forest floor. I did have to stop in the middle of building the cage to get a mandatory little video of Salem. I have my priorities in line, okay? I needed to get a quick video of him. He looked cute. So once I finished setting up everything, all the hides and the things to climb on and the water bowl, I was done, so that was really it. One thing I did go ahead and add after filming that little piece was some fake leaves where the little gap is between the top and the back wall. Until I figure out the perfect place to stop putting the foam so it will expand to the top but not further, I'm just using fake leaves for the time being to kind of fill that gap so it doesn't look as weird. That is his enclosure and again that's just using stuff I had around the house. So next up we have Tofu's cage which isn't gonna take very long to show, it's just a little quick overview of it because it was already built. It was Salem's old cage. So this back wall was built for Salem initially when he was smaller. But one thing with king snakes and rat snakes is they do like to climb sometimes. They're of course not fully arboreal or anything like that, but they do like to climb. When Salem was in this enclosure, he used the back wall so much and Tofu absolutely loves it too. He absolutely loves- he sleeps up there all the time. He'll sleep in little parts- the little hides that are floating up there. He'll lay out on the little branches. This is probably my favorite wall that I've done so far. I just had like all the right pieces to combine and it just worked out really well. This is another enclosure that I don't think I'm gonna keep on Aspen. I've just gotten really tired of the way Aspen looks and I find it gets it doesn't deal well with getting wet. It molds easily. Not that I really get my king snakes and my rat snakes enclosures super wet, but still. I like the way forest floor is more and I'm just kind of experimenting with other substrates. But for now, it has the Aspen in it. Not my favorite thing, but that's that's fine and um, he's doing really good. He really likes the enclosure a lot. Now to end this video off, I did want to show you guys Tofu. He is so crazy. That's pretty much expected from rat snakes. They're pretty, they're pretty crazy little guys. I do have hope that he will get better as he gets older. Basically when I went through the worst of my addiction, I didn't really handle him much. I just fed him, cleaned his cage, gave him water, that's it. So he kind of regressed from all of the work that we had done as a baby on getting him to be a calmer snake. When I started working with him again initially, this year he did have a lot of issues with biting, which is again very normal for rat snakes, especially juveniles. He's not necessarily a juvenile anymore, even though he kind of looks it. He is pretty small. He's only like maybe about two years younger than Salem and he should be closer to Salem size. But nevertheless, he is going through a growth spurt right now where he is shedding like constantly. And speaking of which, he is shedding right now. That's why I'm kind of talking fast to get this part over and done with because I want to put him back away because you don't really want to overly handle snakes when they're shedding. You can tell that he's shedding because he's got those blue eyes. He is just such a wacky little dude. He never slows down, but we're gonna work on that. After just working with him again for a little bit, he's already gotten a lot better with he doesn't bite anymore. Again, he's gotten back to not biting, which is good. Hopefully we're gonna keep seeing him go through a growth spurt here. We're gonna just keep seeing progress and him speeding along, but not too fast to where he outgrows his cage right now. I really need him to, I need him to stay in it for like six months at least. And then I'll just have to get some space for an upgrade if I'm not out of this house yet and he's gotten substantially bigger. Salem, on the other hand, is a beast. He is just, he's a big boy. This might be kind of stupid of me. Since I was just handling tofu and now I'm handling him, I'm at risk of being bit. Salem has never bitten me before. Maybe as a baby, I don't really remember. He's a really gentle and pretty calm king snake, but I have discovered now as an adult that uh, he does have a tendency, if I smell like tofu, to just give me, to give me a little taste. He likes to just give it a little taste. It's not like an aggressive bite. It's just like a I need to try this kind of thing. If his scales look a little weird right now, I don't know if you can tell. It should go away in his next shed. Um, He just went through a phase of being a little bit of an idiot. This cage that I put him in, I did not know this was a thing until he pointed it out to me, but there's a little wedge in the cage where the door will rest when you close it, and that wedge has a little piece that can like kind of open up a little bit. I'll, you'll see in the footage if it's not making sense. And he has found a way to push himself into that little wedge, and he gets stuck in there and he can't get out, so he starts moving back and forth trying to get out and he scraped his scales. Hey, do you maybe, uh, do you maybe want to not do that? Hello, sir. Hi. All right. Um, 
he's stuck. I don't want to pull too hard because it'll hurt his scales. So we're gonna pull it backwards like this and stick my finger in and work him back out. Come on, you can do it. There you go. So that should get better after his next shed because it's just a superficial scratch. It's not deep or anything. He's a little special. He needs some help sometimes, a little bit of an assistance, but it's okay. But yeah, that's just a little update on these guys. We'll keep doing updates on all my animals. I do have other animals than just snakes. I know I've been showing my snakes a lot lately. We'll, we'll still continue to talk about other animals than just snakes if you're not interested in snakes. But thank you guys for watching. Can you say bye, Salem? Salem, say bye. Say bye. Do a little tongue thing. Do a tongue thing, at least. Just a little slither. Come on. Come on. Oh, right when I put you up to the screen, you don't want to do nothing. Come on. Right when I put you up to the lens, you just don't want to do anything now? Do a trick or something. You look like a seal. You look like a baby seal. Alright. Well. If this is a staring contest, you guys are going to lose. Because spoilers, he doesn't have um, eyelids. So, alright. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>